Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another batch of new comic book reviews. Still going through the Future State, still catching up to Future State, as a matter of fact, and going to talk about Future State Superman. What was this? Uh, yeah, I think this is just Superman Man of Metropolis. I also have a couple of uh, others, some Marvel, some DC. I forgot what I put on here. I do know that I've got a weird independent comic book as well. So definitely stuff to stick around for. So let's kick back, relax, and get this party started. Alrighty, gang. Like I said, Superman Man of Metropolis. We did a live stream on this one over at I Love Comics, and I, I think that's going to be like the main focus or, or these future state books. And I got to tell you, this is one I really enjoyed. I, I think they nailed it on this one. First of all, Jonathan Kent is not Clark Kent. Jonathan Kent is not Superman. Now, you should say he, he's better because he was raised by uh, by Clark Kent, but he was also raised by Lois Lane. So he does have that impulsive side. He's got that uh, reckless side to him as well. Uh, Clark Kent was raised by the Kents, maybe the best parents of all time in any comic book ever. Uh, and, and so expect this Superman to make mistakes. Expect this Superman to be impulsive. That's what you should do. That's in his character. And I think we see that here. I think we see they, they really do um, well at making us know that this is a character who's trying his damn best to live up to the shield that's on his chest, but kind of misses the mark <laughs> a little bit with the shrinking of Metropolis in order to save it. I think First of all, when I saw that, I was like, holy crap, that's brilliant. I, I, I'm i sorry, but I, I, I do think that it was really kind of cool to see somebody do something that big and you know it's a screw up. Everybody does. Supergirl shows up and uh, kind of wants to beat them down for, for messing up. But she gets controlled by what we find out is the next version of Brainiac. And... Uh, the fight ensues. I got to tell you, man, just a lot of fun. A lot of fun, this book. I like the writing. I like the uh, world building. This is one of the few comic books that let you know what's going on before they actually get to the violence in the story and all that kind of stuff, or the plot, I should say. Yeah, so far, so good. All right, next up, I want to talk about an independent comic book that came out last week. It's called Serial. And this one, I... I I understand some people love Love and Rockets by Terry Moore. I never really got into that, but it's not, I don't know. Uh, he's a hit and miss with me. And this is the story very well told. This is, a, this is like, okay, what are we watching here? So this book, I realize, is the graphic novel version of a movie that's out called A Promising Young Woman, where we have this girl who goes in... Oh, I'm just spoiling the crap out of this, but just by saying that much. Okay, so we find out that there's this girl who goes out and seeks vengeance on men who prey upon young women. Now, unlike Promising Young Woman, which I thought was a cluster, this is someone who goes out and preys on men who, who uh, prey on young women. Like, she's posing as a 16-year-old girl here in this 40-something... Uh, tries to force himself on her. Okay, that's one thing. Promising Young Woman. Way different. Horrible movie, by the way. Uh, but that's what we get here. A lot of it is told without dialogue. A lot of it is just sequential storytelling. And I could get into that. I like that. It's what comic books should be about. Uh, they're not just a series of pictures with words over them. If you take away... You, you should be able to tell what's going on. You should be able to tell the story of a comic book even if all of the words are taken off the page, and you can very much do this. I love sequential storytelling. Um, I'm not a big... I, I was talking about to my brother about this. I'm not a big art fan. Like, I can't look at a, a Chagall or something and go, oh, wow, yeah, I could see the brush strokes, blah, 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 blah. I love sequential art, though. I love it. And this is what we get here. So, not a lot of Terry Moore writing to get in, in the way of the plot, I guess I'm saying. Uh, all the while, it is telling you everything you need to know about all of the characters. It's telling you everything you know about everybody involved. And it gives you enough to go on that you can actually care about what's happening in the story itself. So, Serial, if you haven't picked it up, give it a shot. I uh, Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. 
Next up, we got to talk about Maestro number four. You notice I'm really only talking about a handful of Marvel comics because I only buy a handful of Marvel comics anymore. Uh, this one, though, we it, it, at the end of three, you had uh, the Hulk show up with all these war dogs that he, he built. That took time, right? And he shows up, and uh, he and Hercules are basically, you know, Hercules are starting to fight. And he just beating the sh out of these war dogs. They, they stand no chance. But it gives the Hulk time to jump in and punch Hercules. And then something brilliant happens. Brilliant. I loved it. Hercules beats the snot out of him. I'm very happy about this because Hercules is a god of Olympus. And for a, for a long time in the Marvel Universe, the Hulk could lay him low. And I never kind of, I, I, I never real, really was okay with that. I thought, you know, if anybody, it would be Thor and Hulk, definitely. Uh, uh, Thor and Hercules should be able to stand up to the Hulk. But in this case, he just levels him, man. He really does. He ragdolls him the way that the Hulk does Loki in the Avengers movie. All the while talking about, yeah, if you didn't have the mind of Bruce Banner, if you could still go crazy, maybe you'll put up a fight, but since you can't anymore... Smack, smack, smack. You know, I mean, it's it's a beautiful thing. I don't know why I thought it was a beautiful thing to watch the Hulk uh, and just get his ass whipped, but yeah, it was a beautiful thing. Much more satisfying than the uh, Avengers Endgame Thanos kicks his ass kind of thing. Man, I'm telling you, I love this storyline. I love this book. Of course, the Hulk does take care of business. We know where this ends up. If you've read Future Imperfect, you know, because this is the prelude to this the uh the 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 what do you call those movies the star wars ones i anyway this is the prelude to maestro this is the beginning of maestro so we know ultimately the hulk wins but for once it's not through strength so banner has to use his brain and he calls upon an old friend of me i guess you could say i hate that word but there you go Anyway, it turns out uh, lots of fun. I'm not going to reveal it here, but uh, yeah, Maestro's pretty cool. All right, let's talk about the unkindness of ravens. Like I said before in a previous review of the second issue, I found out that this was one of those young adult novels or something like that that got uh, adapted to comic book form. And I like the fact they do this. They give you a little bit of a, hey, this is what's going on. They even sometimes give you insight within the novel that you don't get in the comic book. So it, it gives you a little bit more than usual, I think. And it, and it works. It works. Also, I've kind of noticed something. This is Riverdale, man. Seriously. Uh, this is Betty and Veronica. The new girl is uh, Betty. This rich girl she goes to meet here is Veronica. And it, they still they have that kind of rivalry going on. All at the same time, there seems to be this whole other coven of witches and everything. Maybe you could call them the Josie and the Pussycats. I don't know. But I've noticed that this very much has the same setup as Riverdale. You even got Archie right there next to her. It's just, uh, it's just an odd thing where everybody is Sabrina. Basically, if you uh, get if you've ever followed Archie, you know what I'm talking about. If not, I'm probably speaking another language to you. But yeah, I, I, I like the story so far. I like the bitchiness here of the uh, rich girl, of course, very Veronica like um, the butler who seems to be related yet. And uh, I think this is actually her brother, but he's acting like a servant. So it makes me think there's some sort of uh, spell on the men in this town. And I mentioned something along the same lines in issue two with the father. And uh, I don't know, man. I'm telling you, there's something very cool, very interesting here. Obviously, uh, the crows flying uh, over their head in that last issue, they obviously knew there was something more. And we find out there's something more when we cut and we uh, to the coven of witches and we see one of them is, has got a bullet. Uh, a bullet in her arm so yeah there's i'm, I'm definitely in, in in for the ride i really am i do like this story so far and uh yeah i recommend it all right so i do like to sum up so let me say this right off the bat there are no bad books and gail just woke up the bird all righty so i do order them from what i think is the worst to the best as much as i love the sequential art to serial 
it's the least of the four books. Be I, I got to say, probably because of the quickness of the read and the simplicity of the story itself. Unkindness of Ravens is really good, and I love the characters in it. Like I said, it's very much like Archie, but we are three issues in. I think it's time to get down to business here. We met everybody already. Now let's get going. Let's get going. Uh, you only have two, uh, two issues left to tell the story here, guys. A lot of Future State feels like it's an Elseworlds thing. The Superman story seems to be like it actually came from the comic books we've read before. And the best of them, I've got to go with Maestro 4 this time around. Just watching the Hulk get his ass whipped was a hell of a lot of fun. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, or ring that notification bell if you haven't done it already. Also, if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on. Helps keep making videos for you. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.